What's going on everybody? It's Corbin with World of HVAC and today we're going to go over the basics of brazing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to raise this piece of copper into my makeshift valve. And we're going to do it like you should every single time you braze copper. We're going to deburr this inside from the cut. We're going to sand it down. And I'm going to show you how to hook up nitrogen to the stem with an actual flow tool. So first things first is I want to take out this lip from this copper because when refrigerant flows through, it will create turbulence. Now the best way to do that is to get a real deburring tool. Take your copper on the inside. Ooh. You can see I'm actually taking shavings out and making this flat. And trust me, using a real tool for this makes it so much faster. You can see on the camera, I have a nice, smooth, non jagged edge, just like a normal pipe. Next up, you're going to want to take some sandpaper and sand down the area that's going to be with a torch. What this is going to do is it's going to take out the impurities or the dirtiness or the tarnish on the actual copper so that the solder will flow nice and freely. So we're going to go ahead and stick it in our valve and then hook up the nitrogen. So with our nitrogen tank we're going to attach our flow tool. This will give roughly I believe three psi through the pipe. The goal is not to blast nitrogen throughout the pipe. The goal is to remove oxygen from the air. This one's nice because it does off, purge, and brace. So when we open it up, just a little bit, you want to go ahead and take your Schrader out. Use the cap or a Schrader tool. Go ahead and get that out of there. Because when you send heat here and it flows down the pipe, you are not getting a Schrader out if you melt the plastic. It's just not going to happen. It is way easier with a tool, not with a cap. So now that you have that out, you're going to go ahead and hook your hose up. Like so. Now the reason behind the nitrogen going through the tubing is you're actually removing the air from the area that you're applying heat. And that will prevent carbon deposits from building up on the inside of the pipe. So when the refrigerant flows through the pipe, it doesn't pick up any carbon deposits that will block a screen at a TXV or a dryer inside the unit. So everything will be nice and pure. So when you're working on any type of valve, or for instance, this hose right here that has a rubber seal or a rubber gasket in it, you're going to want to apply something, a wet rag, cool gel, or solder weld makes heat block, you're gonna to wanna to apply it to wherever you don't want the heat to go. Because if you're applying it here, that heat will travel down the pipe. Next up is taking our pipe, getting it in there, and it is time for the torch. So if you are new to the trade, let me explain this right here. This is your torch. This is your acetylene, this is your oxygen. To ignite it, you're going to release the acetylene, hit your striker. Once that's ignited, you're going to release this oxygen very slowly. Quick tip, in order to tell how hot this is, go by the sound coming out. If it's extremely loud, it's extremely hot. If it's not that loud, it's not that hot. Once you get the feel of it, you're going to realize which sound you need where. Like I'm going to need a hotter sound on this one, but if I'm working on a 3 8 line, it's not going to be that hot. It's going to heat up way faster than this pipe is. Always keep it moving. If you stay in one spot for too long, you'll end up poking a hole in the copper. That's exactly how I got that stem in there. Stayed in there for one spot for too long, and that's how I got my hole. Instead of using a drill bit, you can use your torch to create a hole. That way you don't have any debris. See, I'm not running it that hot. I can't get it to flow, but if I increase the heat, I'll make it a bit nicer. So the solder will travel 
wherever the heat is. Watch this. If I just apply heat this way, the solder will travel that joint. So now that you have your joint complete all the way around, what you're gonna to wanna to do is called crowning. What I like to do is just take this, go sideways over top, make a nice little crown over the rim, and voila. It's like an extra assurance that you don't have a hole. You're gonna to wanna to cool it down really quick. Outside it's nice, but you can see this is bubbling up. All that heat is traveling. So I'm gonna cool it down real fast. There we go. This is not hot. That heat gel did exactly what I needed, which means I didn't melt my gasket. I hope this video helped you out, whether you're new to the trade or looking to get better, please check out the tech space video list I have set up. It is for technicians. It's going to be filled with tips, tricks, and general information. And if you would be so kind as to subscribe to the channel, hit a like down below and let me know what you thought about the video, anything I can do better or any advice you have for anybody looking for help in the field and stay tuned for more.